I'm Julianne from Leafling Learns, and I want to talk about video games that aren't Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley. I'm here today because I would love to talk about some video games that I have been playing in Japanese as someone who is new to playing video games in Japanese. My iTalkie tutor once told me that I'm N3, but I've never taken a JLPT test, so I, I guess I, I feel like I would say I'm like lower intermediate, but I don't know what I am. This video is not meant to be a comprehensive review of any of these games. I love to start games. I don't necessarily like to finish them. I just want to talk about games that I'm really enjoying right now, and maybe you would enjoy them as well. Some of these games I'm not very far into. Uh, some of them barely pass the prologue, but I'm enjoying them, so I just wanted to share about them anyway. I feel like the games that are always recommended for language learning. Animal Crossing Stardew Valley. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. They are excellent games, but I don't want to hear it anymore. Pokemon as well. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I tried that many years ago and I felt like I was spending a lot of time like relearning Pokemon names because they're different in the original Japanese, of course. Learning attacks, yada yada yada. Part of the reason why I don't necessarily want to hear Stardew Valley recommendations is because I've read several places that the Japanese translation is bad. Like, I've read that it's not very good, and I don't necessarily want to be spending my time working through a game that I get addicted to. If, it, if the Japanese isn't any good, like, that doesn't seem like a good use of my time. I'm trying to avoid games that are too overly fantasy rpg -y. Those are the kinds of games I would love to be playing. I would love to just play some JRPGs, but I'm trying to um, ease myself in. I don't want to start with something that feels too hard and scare myself out of playing video games entirely. I know at some point it's going to be worth it to just jump in and kind of familiarize myself with that, but I really feel like I can work more on kind of foundational language that's used more every day. So these games that I've found are I think really excellent gameplay wise. I think they're pretty comprehensible. They're just a good time. They're just a good time. So I'm also going to talk about some visual novels and I discovered as I was looking into visual novels that a lot of them are um, pornographic. <laughs> a lot of them are like really saucy. I haven't witnessed any of it, but the, I, I've read about how there are all sorts of things that can happen during these visual novels and I'm just looking for like a wholesome fun time. I don't need to have all of my needs met by a video game. Um, so I've been hunting around for visual novels that are not saucy, so I hope to share some with you today. I will talk a little bit about why I'm playing them, what I think about them, and I'll show a little bit of gameplay as well. I use either Shirex's OCR feature or Text Tractor to make sentence cards from these games. Some of them have audio, some of them do not. So when I'm doing the gameplay, I'll show you me making sentence cards at the same time. I'm not going to go in depth about it. I am not going to explain how to set up either of these things. There are all sorts of resources out there about how to set up Text Tractor, for example. And if you're looking to set up um, Sharex's OCR feature, you should definitely check out Ruby's new video, which just came out today as well. My dear friend Ruby made a very helpful little tutorial about how to set that up. If you don't know what I'm talking about, you will see more about what I'm talking about in the future. The first game that I want to talk about is one of my most beloved games in English or Japanese. This game is called Hamtaro Ham Ham Heartbreak. It is for the Game Boy Advance. Uh, however, you can certainly find it if you look for it. I'll say no more than that. You would have to search for the Japanese title. The title in Japanese is Totoko Hamutaro san Rabu Rabu Daibo Ken Dechu. <laughs> so the first thing to say about Hamtaro is you will run into some hamster speak chews and cheese are thrown around indiscriminately. So you're not gonna get completely authentic human Japanese necessarily, but it's very close. Um, you will hear Bijou or Ribon-chan often say Dechu uh, ne, as in des, but Dechu. And also a key part of this game is learning hamster dialect, which is called 
Hamugo. I should also state that it is in all kana. I know that can scare some people away if they're very comfortable with kanji. I like to think of it as listening practice, but you don't hear anything because you have to just parse the kana, just parse the sounds. It's really not that bad once you get used to it. And if you're not super comfortable with kanji, then maybe this is the perfect game for you. It's just really excellent because it's the, the language is simple. It's easy to figure out what people are talking about. Um, you can't fail, <laughs> really. Um, the game is centered around saving friendships and relationships of these hamsters. So it's a lot of dialogue. You're solving puzzles. You're helping interpersonal relationships. So it's a lot of good language. And it's, I mean, it's fun in English. Honest to God, it's really fun. I would recommend it either way. It's so good. Okay, so this is Hamtaro. It's brilliant. You can't use Textractor with it. OCR doesn't really work super well. It's easiest just to type what you see or take screenshots of what you see and just use that. Um, so let's take a look. So that's somebody who needs my help. And I am just going to click this seed instead of help them. And let's get somebody to say something. So this is Hamugo. I should mention it over there. Um, you always have different options to choose. Hamuha is hello. Kunka Kunka is to sniff, which is what I did to get that seed. Atachu is attack. Moguchu is to dig. So these are often based on actual words or onomatopoeia. I will attack her. Okay, so we got a line of dialogue and I will show you Something that is handy when OCR does work when you're using Text Tractor is this Yomi Chan feature I didn't know about, where you press this magnifying glass, it opens a page, you make sure clipboard monitor is checked, and it's very highly functional. Um, OCR is not, but Yomi Chan is, so let's. I have my ShareX hotkeys all lined up, so I just chose the OCR hotkey that I have set up. I'm selecting the text. The font is funky, so it does not get it very well. Mrs. Ten Tens gets letters wrong. This is why I would just type this one, I think. Um, but when it does work, you can hover over words and it will tell you what they are and it will give you furigana. Very handy. Obviously that didn't work. Let's just type this sentence as if I'm going to mine it. Kun to asoberu yona. And it knows what kanji that is. Kibun ja nine dake do. Okay, so let's say I don't know what asoberu means. You select it, control S, Migaku Dictionary over here is going to pull up the definition for you. I have Migaku Dictionary add on installed to Anki, I have Migaku Japanese add on installed, and I'm using the Migaku card exporter because I just find it very handy over here. It deconjugates the word for me, it knows that I mean asobu, it shows me the frequency click a little card button, it adds it to the exporter with a the definition there. Now, down in Forvo, which I definitely want to use, especially because I don't have audio for this sentence, normally you would have to deconjugate the word yourself up here, change this to Asobu in search to get more results. Um, the Forvo search doesn't do the deconjugated version for whatever reason on its own. You have to do it manually, but somebody recorded Asoberu. Click that, then I'm going to do screenshot with my other ShareX hotkey, control shift V, there's my screenshot, there's everything that I need, Hamtaro is the tag, press add and I will show you what that card looks like. Here it is and my Anki's a little fancy, it looks good sometimes, bad other times, it looks great on my phone. This looks cute, there's the sentence that she said to us and on the other side, Asoberu, it auto plays, you can play it more times. Um, I realize these colors look a bit insane, but that is none of your business. If you maybe didn't know about Stardew Valley having bad Japanese translation, this is a great option for you this next game, because it's Harvest Moon, the game that Stardew Valley is heavily inspired by. Harvest Moon slash Story of Seasons is complicated, I'm not getting into that, but in Japanese it's called Bokujo Monogatari, so that's farm story. And this game in particular that I want to recommend is for the Switch. It's a remake of Harvest Moon Friends of Mineral Town. It's called Bokujo Monokatari Saikai no Mineraru Town, and it's excellent. 
So if you like that game on the Game Boy Advance, your nostalgia point here with this game. It's all in 3D now. The gameplay is great. It's not as handholdy as some Harvest Moon games, but I don't find that to be a problem. I don't know, like, it has the farming simulation side, it has friendships and relationships that you build up. I find the cutscenes really fun, the dialogue's really fun, um, very comprehensible. Oh, the cherry on top of the cake. There's Furigana. It's incredible. It's incredible. Why don't all games have this? So it's just, it's really nice and it's a really fun time. Highly recommend it. I am definitely not going to be showing you gameplay footage of Boku Jo Monogatari or anything on the Switch because you know what? I don't have a capture card because I am just a normal run-of-the-mill bee and that's fine. You can look at some of these beautiful images and this is how I do my sentence mining anyway, right? Like I play the Switch game. It's beautiful and lovely. If I see an I plus one sentence, I screenshot it, okay? Then once a week, I take out my little SD card, I bring all the images onto my computer, and then I just do this process. So here you'll see, this is what your farm looks like. Beautiful 3D, I'm a tiny little person, the characters are kind of weird. For games with furigana, of which there are a few, I feel like it's often gonna be easier to just type it yourself, because I feel like when we OCR it, I'll try to avoid those top ones to the best of my ability, but Sometimes it might just be more trouble than it's worth to get rid of um, Furigana if it includes it. Okay, this one didn't include it, so that's great. It makes my life very easy, and as you can see, it got everything correctly because this is very clear. So again, all you would do would be uh, grab whatever word you don't know. Let's choose this one. And you would just bada bing bada boom. This game isn't voice acted, so you wouldn't even be able to get sentence audio anyway. Beautiful. If you're in the normal adding a card window, you could very easily just copy this image file, paste it over here. I'm not using that. I'm using the card exporter, so I can't just drag it or copy it over. So I do have to do this extra step of taking a screenshot of an image that I already have saved, but that's fine. So I'll show you, this is my boyfriend, Brandon, kind of standoffish and weird. So he's perfect for me. He's also the only one who doesn't look completely like a toddler in the portrait. Uh, you can see this was a cut scene, but this is what the game looks like. And I will of course show you what the animals look like. Um, you can get a wider variety. There's so many quality of life updates from the Friends of Mineral Town Game Boy Advance Edition. Like, it is a vastly improved game. The cows <laughs> can have different flavors. <laughs> not for not for eating them, for milk, okay? Um, you can get alpacas. You can get sheep. You have your horse, chickens, all that kind of stuff. It's just wonderful. You do have to purchase this one through the Japanese eShop, okay? You, if you buy it in your English language eShop, you're not going to be able to switch it to Japanese. You have to do it through a Japanese account. You can look up how to set that up. It's very easy. The next game that I've been enjoying, which is a little bit surprising, is my first visual novel, which happens to be an Otome game. I find Otome games a little bit frightening because I am very pure. This one's rated E. I thought it was worth a try. Why not? It's on the Switch. It's called Kitty Love, A Way to Look for Love. Even though I'm not into the romance stuff, I have to say this game is enjoyable and I'm finding the language is probably the language is more advanced than the previous two games. The sentences are longer, that kind of thing. But it's all super useful because it's very kind of slice of life type of language. I'll talk about the premise briefly here if you don't want to be spoiled about the first two minutes of the game or whatever, you know, <laughs> go forward a minute. None of this is really a spoiler probably, but um, so Kitty Love is on the Switch. You don't have to get it through the Japanese Switch store. You can just, it's available in Japanese if you get it in the English one. Anyway, so Kitty Love Sounds extremely stupid, right? That's a stupid name. Um, the premise is pretty stupid, too. You 
uh, you are cursed and you turn into a cat. And the only way to break the curse is to um, find true love, of course. Yes, dumb. However, it's actually quite sweet. It's very sweet to see your anime boy of choice interacting with a cat. My anime boy is very good with cats and he saved me. All right, he saved me from some alley cats and he cleaned me up. And when you see a guy treating a cat nicely, I mean, how can your heart not go a little doki doki? What can you do about it? I do like learning kind of cat related <laughs> language, language about petting cats, language about stuff that cats get up to. It's not all cat language because you also like work in a flower shop and stuff like that. Unfortunately, does not have furigana, didn't expect it to. I'm not very far into this one because I'm a little bit frightened about if the anime boy is gonna try to kiss me or something. Like, is there gonna be kissing? I know it's gonna get a little romantic and I'm just a little nervous. So that's my Otome game. We'll see how that goes. Um, we'll see if I'm brave enough to face other Otome games. I did purchase one, I haven't played it yet because it seems too difficult. Okay, welcome back to Screenshot Town. When I play it on the Switch, because there's no furigana, I use an app on my phone called Yomiwa. So Yomiwa will do live OCR. So you'll select camera on Yomiwa and you'll hold it in front of your Switch and, you know, focus on the words and then pause the camera and it will then pop up with furigana. It will pop up um, definitions. I don't really need to be using... Yomi-chan's clipboard monitor for this because I'm only going to be taking screenshots of things if there's just one word that I don't know. So this whole sentence I don't need defined for me or anything. I don't need to break down a whole sentence. I don't need furigana for everything. So let's OCR this. This is one of the boys that you can choose but I didn't choose him. He's my boss and that wouldn't be that wouldn't be ethical I don't think. So as you can see, it OCRs beautifully. I will show you my special boy. This is my anime boy of choice. He's the one who saved me, and for that, I will give him eternal love. Kitty Love is voice acted. However, because it's on the Switch, it, it's there's no easy way for me to be recording that sentence audio. So I just have a good time while I'm playing, enjoy it there. And I just live without it in the sentence cards because I don't really care that much, to be honest. In the next game that I talk about, you will see some actual live visual novel gameplay. If you don't know what a visual novel is, you'll actually get to see it happening. You won't just see my stupid screenshots, so stay tuned. You know, I started looking for other visual novels that I could play that aren't necessarily romantic. <laughs> or like, if they are romantic, maybe it's a little less... It's not only romance, you know what I'm saying? So... I started playing a very classic game, uh, Clanad, I don't know how to say that, Curanado, Curanado, I don't know what that means. And this is one where I'm barely, barely in the beginning of it, all right? So I can't speak much to the content. The main character, he goes to high school, you're at a high school slice of life. I think it may get a little bit weird later, but I'm not sure entirely. He's kind of, he's kind of a bad boy a little bit. Not like a super bad boy, I don't think. I, I guess I don't know yet, but he's a little bit of a bad boy. And it's kind of, I think there are a lot of different paths you can go. And it's just kind of about his friendships, relationships with these different girls at his school, and how that like changes his life, that kind of thing. It's voice acted, so that's great. That's really nice. And I will just say that the pixel art, I mean, the characters are a little weird looking, but the pixel art is beautiful. So it's just kind of a lovely experience and it works for me super well with text tractor so it's really easy to get sentences from it. It's easy enough to uh, get the audio. It's a little haphazard how I do it. As far as I can tell there's not a way to replay audio from the log. Um, you'll, you'll see what I do. Very comprehensible. Was delighted that it was very comprehensible. I really haven't run into anything too complicated in that game, but again, I've barely started. And Clan Ad, it's so popular, it's so classic. If you look for it, you will find it. Okay? Okay, so this is a game that does work with text tractor, so that's running over here and it it 
can pull all the text from it. And how I have this set up is that it will, each time a text is put into here, it will copy to my clipboard and that will both put it in this running script here and into the Yomi-chan searchable log of sorts. So I'll show you this. Let's load, let's load where I left off here. And okay, I'm in a classroom. And as you will see, that line of narrative text is there and it's over here. I use both just because this functionality is greater. Like it's just so easy to see what words are right away. Um, see the furigana right away. You don't have to like search individual words, but it's nice to have this because if I want to go back, that will still be copyable. I can always look at the log after things have played, but that's not going to recopy it over here. But I can always go back here and select that, copy it, and that's going to bring it back over here. Very handy. Okay, so as you can see, it does have voice acting. So, when I go back in the log, as far as I can tell, I cannot replay that audio. So what I do is, if I'm in an, a section where I know that a conversation is happening, if I really want audio cards, I will just kind of start <laughs> recording the audio before anything's going. Okay, so I'm going to assume the next line might be dialogue. I start recording. And I stop. Okay. So I guess that's the sentence we're mining. I will paste the audio there. And I'm going to have to grab, because that copy overwrote the script, I will copy this. If you want, you can hide the stuff for your screenshot. And you have a whole ass card over here with your audio, your visual, and everything else that you need. The next game is a visual novel for maybe anybody who really wants to stay as far away from the romance stuff as they can. There may be some romance in this one, I don't know yet, but this one is a murder mystery, okay? So if you just want something completely different, it's a murder mystery, but it's set in a rural town and it's around like you're hanging out with like high schoolers or whatever. So slice of life kind of stuff, maybe plus some murder vocab. This game is called Higurashi When They Cry and I'm playing it on the computer. So Higurashi When They Cry, this rural town has a festival every year and for the past four years someone dies or goes missing the night of the festival every year and it's like not really been investigated so it's about that again i'm barely out of the prologue but it's voice acted the writing is similar to clan ads level pretty comprehensible not too bad i haven't gotten into the meat of it so i don't know if it's gonna be kind of scary or just creepy or what. I wanted to bring this game up, even though I don't know too much about it, because you can get the first chapter for free on Steam or GOG, I don't know how to pronounce it. But if you go on Steam, you can get the first chapter for free. I highly recommend you download uh, what's called Seventh Mod. I'll link to that in the description. But the thing is, is when this game was ported to PC, they like got rid of the voice acting and like the graphics look worse. So this mod will make the graphics good. They'll use the graphics from whatever console it was on originally, and they bring the voice acting back. And I'll tell you, when you're downloading this, it's gonna look like you can only choose like English stuff, but just download it, choose English. You're going to, once you start the game, have the option for English or Japanese. I was very nervous that I wasn't going to be able to get Japanese voice acting, but I did, and Japanese text, it's all, it's all good. Uh, this is basically the same situation as Clanad, except you cannot use Text Tractor or, okay, that's not true. Text Tractor worked, but it slowed the game down nearly to a halt. It was like basically unplayable. <laughs> so we had to let go of that idea. Luckily, it's super easy to OCR. So let's just start from 
I'll start from this point here. So as you can see, the font is fairly differentiated from the background. Let's try this. Yeah, beautiful, that's a match. So you would just do the same shit that I've done with all the other things here with making your cards. There's nothing really new to it. Again, having the um, clipboard inserter with this text hooker HTML page that I got from the text tracker tutorial that I use, which I will link in the description. It's super handy to just have this running script of copyable text. Beautiful. I don't think, yeah, you see, there's no way to replay it, unfortunately. So this would be a situation where if I know dialogue is happening, I would do my little audio recording ahead of time. And then you, if you know a sentence is happening, you don't have to use the audio. Like you can record it and then just move to the next thing, never paste it into Anki, it doesn't matter. See, if you knew what the original graphics looked like, if you knew what they looked like, you would know that this is a vast improvement. That's nice that it stops the audio after a sentence sometimes, and you can press whatever to get the next sentence to come up. So it's separated like that. You don't have a super long audio or anything like that. Okay, the final game that I would like to talk about, which maybe isn't for everybody, um, it has a little bit of a story behind it. It's called Gift Pia. All right, it's oh, in Japanese, Gifutopia. And the story behind this is that when I was around 10 years old, I got my first GameCube. I'm a huge fan of the GameCube. I have like four GameCubes. Um, so I was kind of high off playing Animal Crossing and Wind Waker. And I was like, man, I gotta find more games like Animal Crossing. This is just perfect. Back then there were not games like Animal Crossing. Now everybody wants to be Animal Crossing. Back then there were not games like Animal Crossing. And it was also, it was kind of zanier Animal Crossing. Like it was a little more, not risque, <laughs> but like it was weirder for sure. So I, I really was just desperate to chase that high and I was, you know, scouring different game magazines and I found a game called Gift Pia and it was only in Japan and it just sounded per- like, it was the only game out there that kind of sounded like Animal Crossing to a certain extent, not entirely, I'll get into that. And I waited and waited and this game never came out in English. So time passes, I start learning a little bit of Japanese when I'm like 15 or so. When I'm like 17, I think I'm like quite Jozu, you know, like I can read hiragana and katakana. I've got some kanji under my belt. Like how hard can this be, you know? So I was like, you know what? I've got some babysitting money in my back pocket. I'm gonna fucking buy this game that I've always wanted. So I purchased it along with a disc that promised to change my GameCube from USA to Japan in order to play the game. Cause it was region locked. Unfortunately, disc didn't really work. All the text was just like really mangled. Like it wasn't English, it wasn't Japanese. I don't know what it was. So I didn't get to play and it was very disappointing, you know? And so this has been 18 years in the making. I was just playing my, my other games the other day, my visual novels. And I thought to myself like, everyone and their mom is playing GameCube games on their computer, okay? As I've said before, if you look for it, you will find it. Okay, so I looked for it and I found it. And I've been playing Giftopia <laughs> um, for the first time after 18 years of anticipation. I've only barely started, okay? I really got into it like yesterday and I'm like, I'm clearly still in like the tutorial, like the intro kind of area. So I can't speak to like if it's overall an excellent game. <laughs> I can't say if it lives up to my expectations yet, but this is just a video about the games I'm enjoying right now and I am enjoying that so far. It doesn't have furigana. 
using OCR on it is a little tricky sometimes because it doesn't have like a black background behind the text, but it's really quite funny. Like it's very zany, very funny. The premise, I'll tell you what the game is. The premise is that you, you're a kid and you oversleep on the day of your becoming an adult ceremony. And for that, you are jailed. <laughs> um, but the mayor agrees to let you do volunteer work for parole. And that volunteer work is helping out your zany neighbors on this zany island. Does that sound familiar? It's what I wanted. It's exactly what I wanted. I just wanted it to do chores and favors for neighbors. That's it. I'll show it to you. It's really weird. <laughs> um, but the language, again, pretty comprehensible. There are some parts that I witnessed in the intro where the text just kind of flies and you can't like pause it. I'm sure, you know, if you're using an emulator, you probably can just pause the whole game. I kind of let it go. I was like, oh, if I if I can't read it, I can't read it, you know? But, you know, most of it is just normal. And there is one character, I don't know how much time I have to spend with him. Right now he is my guardian because I'm still, I'm wearing my prison clothes. I have a ball and chain. My face is blurred out. He's a robot cop and he speaks in all katakana. So he speaks all in katakana, except um, when he says des, he uses this kanji. <laughs> Why? I don't, I don't know. Yeah, if you're looking for something zany, if you're looking for something not super hardcore, why not play Gift Pia? <laughs> it's a classic. I don't know. I don't know if people liked it. <laughs> I mean, it has good reviews on like Amazon, but. So here we have Gift Pia, which you can see from the jump is very strange. Music's weird. Start from here. Here I am, Pokuru. I didn't say this correctly earlier, but it's not just des where he uses this kanji, it's every time it's de. So it's in place of de, so kagami de miruto. Don't ask me why. So my task is to pick up trash. That's creepy. The eyes. So I have both health and a timer. At least initially I have this timer because um, I, I have a curfew because <laughs> I'm a criminal. Um, and your restrictions are loosened up over time. All right, I completed that one in time. Okay, so let's try OCRing this line. Some the OCR works like half the time. It depends on kind of what's behind the text. So let's try that out. Okay, it looks like it got it. I'll paste that over here and just make your card like you would any of the other cards. All right, those are the games I'm enjoying right now. A few throwbacks. I really am having a good time. I didn't think that I would. I thought games would be maybe a little much because you know, you have to answer questions sometimes or like choose, but it's, it's really not a big deal. They're all 
fairly easy to get. Kitty Love is like on sale a lot. <laughs> like you can get Kitty Love pretty cheap. Higurashi first chapter is free on Steam. The other games, if you look, you will find them. So if you have any off the beaten path Japanese game recommendations that you would like to make, please leave them in the comments. I would love to see them. If you try any of these games, please come back and let me know how it goes. If you learn any Hamugo, please, <laughs> please leave a comment in Hamugo and I will respond in Hamugo. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Slam that like button, slam that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.